How's it going, guys? Difficult question for embryology. We got a four-year-old boy who has Wardenburg syndrome. So this is going to be W-A-A-R-D-E-N-B-U-R-G syndrome. It's a congenital deafness syndrome, okay? And the correct answer is A, abnormal neural crest migration. So this is going to cause pigmentary anomalies. So you need melanocytes to have normal neural crest function slash differentiation. So you can get white forelock, this fuzzy image here. And USMLE can describe this. And they want you to know it's Wardenberg syndrome, which is failure of neural crest migration. You get heterochromia, which is different colored irides, which is a fancy word that's just plural for iris. And you can get craniofacial anomalies, so dystopia panthorum, which is widely spaced intercanthi. You can get parts of the inner ear affected, which is why it's a congenital deafness syndrome. So this is Wardenberg syndrome and not to be confused with Wallenberg syndrome, which is lateral medullary syndrome, completely unrelated. So let's just whip through the others. Defective apoptosis, web tissue is fucking wrong. So that's syndactyly. So polysyndactyly, where you have multiple webbed fingers, classically Patau syndrome, trisomy 13, so holoprosencephaly with cyclopia, polysyndactyly. Also, syndactyly can be seen in Apert syndrome, Goodman syndrome, but those aren't going to be assessed in USMLA. Wrong fucking answer. Choices C and D. So choice C is going to be cleft palate. Choice D is going to be cleft lip. Both fucking wrong. Okay? So you just need to memorize the embryology. It's not complicated. If they give you cleft palate, you just say the answer is C. If they give you cleft lip, the answer is D. And there's two points I can make. Number one, if a kid has a cleft lip or palate, there is a 3 to 4% chance of a subsequent pregnancy for the parents where the kid, the next kid will have a cleft lip palate. And the second point is that it's multi-loci, polygenic associated, and it's a one-off developmental anomaly, meaning it's usually not part of a syndrome. Cleft lip palate can obviously be parts of different syndromic conditions. Let's say DeGeorge as an example, but the vast majority are one-off developmental anomalies. Same thing for pyloric stenosis, same thing for congenital heart defects, VSD, ASD, et cetera. Can they be, car be part of syndromes? Let's say Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, of course. But the vast majority, US only wants you to know that these are one-off developmental anomalies, polygenic, multi loci associated. Wrong fucking answers. Choice C, persons thyroglossal ducts fucking wrong. So thyroglossal duct says endoderm of foramen cecum is the embryology for thyroglossal ducts. So, so the thyroid gland, embryologically, it starts development at the base of the tongue, the foramen cecum, and it descends the thyroglossal duct down into the neck, inferior to the hyoid bone. And they can give you the classic pediatric case of a kid who has a midline painless neck lump that moves upward with swallowing slash protrusion of the tongue. And they can sometimes tell you that it lights up with a Technetium 99 scan. Wrong fucking answer. So I see Rathke pouch remnants fucking wrong. So that's obviously craniopharyngioma. It's the roof of the primitive oropharynx or roof of primitive oral cavity is how they can describe it. It's the most common pituitary tumor in pediatrics in adults who be prolactinoma. Craniopharyngioma can sometimes calcify, can sometimes have cholesterol crystals, it can sometimes have squamous epithelium. Wrong fucking answer.